transfigured on the mount of Christ our God, revealing thy glory to thy disciples as far as they could bear it. Let Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. My name is Father Athanasios Heros, and I'm the pastor here at the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina. Today is the Feast of the Holy Cross, the universal exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now that's a mouthful, but it's worth saying every word because there's power in the cross. I'll be back in a moment. We've just heard a very moving gospel story. The story from Holy and Great Friday, the story of the crucifixion of our Lord. Today we commemorate the cross. Today is the universal exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And last week I had offered you a challenge. If you remember last week, I left you with a challenge to find time during the week to stare at the cross of Christ. Either a cross or an icon of the cross or an icon of Christ crucified. I had challenged you to do that during the week and I had suggested that when we keep our eyes focused on God, specifically the cross of Christ, our struggles seem to fade away, even though they're still there. Because there's power in the cross of Christ. And today, the universal exaltation of the cross throughout the entire world. The cross of Christ is being lifted up so people could set their eyes on the cross because there's power in the cross. The power to allow, rather to send our struggles away. I want you to imagine being in the presence of the true cross of Christ. I want you to imagine for a moment that in this church, what if we were blessed to have in our midst the very cross that Christ was crucified on? Would we act differently? Would we somehow treat the presence of that cross a little differently than, oh, the gold cross around my neck? There was a day when the true cross of Christ was found by St. Helen. In the year 327, 1,700 years ago, 300 years after the crucifixion. And St. Helen went to Jerusalem on a pilgrimage and found all of the holy sites of Christ and built churches there and found the actual cross, the very wood that still contained the blood of God. And if there was any doubt in the power of that cross, my brothers and sisters, there was no doubt that moment when she found the cross as it immediately began to perform miracles. Sick boys and girls, their bodies just set on the cross, healed instantly. Because there's power in the cross. And so the cross was set up in the church 
as a symbol of God's victory. Remember, her son Constantine had seen the vision of the cross. And tutonika, in this sign is victory. Because there's power in the cross. And Constantine, wanting, wanting to defeat his enemies, embraced the cross as his symbol of power. And in acknowledgement of his victory, gave freedom to the Christian people because there's power in the cross. And for hundreds of years, the cross has been flying as a banner over our churches as a symbol of God's victory because there's power in the cross. It is no accident that in our world that is so struggling, we as Greek Orthodox Christians go to the hospitals, men, women, priests, deacons, bishops, and we all do the same thing. We do the sign of the cross on ourselves and on our sick brothers and sisters because there's power in the cross, my brothers and sisters. And this power is given to us by God not to defeat political enemies, but to defeat Satan. And the hymn that we sing today so son kirie ton laon su, ke evloi son tinklironomian su, ni kastis vasilevsis, grant victory katavavaron, in Greek, against the barbarians. But we say in English, against the adversaries of the faith. Because when that hymn was written, and the empire was Christian, the hymn of the cross symbolized the power of God and the victory of God because the Christian church was the conscience of the empire. And so anything outside the empire, the barbarian lands, fought to defeat the empire and to defeat the church just as it is doing today in the Middle East. But there's power in the cross. It is no accident that when you see what's happening in the Middle East, the first thing destroyed in the churches are the crosses. The enemy climbs to the top of the cross, demolishes the cross off the church because it is a reminder that they're fighting against God and they will not win because there's power in the cross. They enter our churches throughout the world and they desecrate the cross of Christ and they, in ancient days, with spears, would poke the eyes out of the icons. Today, with guns, they point the, shoot the eyes out of the icons because they fear the power of God and they don't want to be reminded of the power of God because there's power of, in the cross. And so here we are in peaceful Florence, South Carolina. There's no one shooting at us. There's no one tearing down our cross that we can see. But every day the enemy tries. Every day the devil sends his angels, his demons, to cause us doubt. He causes us temptation to fall away and question, maybe there isn't so much power in the cross. I do my cross, but I'm still in pain. 
And this doubt, my brothers and sisters, is exactly what makes the devil happy. So today, the church brings the cross and elevates it to remind you and me and the devil and his demons that there's power in the cross of Christ. And yet, we seem to live like there is no power. We instead give our lives over to the world. And we say, oh, it's too hard of a struggle. You can't really expect us to fight all of those temptations. You can't really expect us to not participate in the life of society, even though the life of society is fighting against the church. We have given the power that was given to us and we've given it away. And instead, we allow the devil and his demons to have power over us because we doubt the power of the cross. Because we doubt God's ability to save us. Now, if you're thinking right now, I, I don't know what you mean, Father. I don't doubt God's ability. Then ask yourselves, when was the last time you, could, you put God's power to work in your life? When was the last time you took on the challenges of the temptations that are coming your way? Have faith in the power of the cross, my brothers and sisters. And you will be victorious over the temptations that come at you day in and day out. Seven days a week. But just as Christ had to willingly ascend the cross, we must willingly accept his cross into our life. We must willingly allow everything that the cross signifies, pain and suffering, yes. Humiliation, yes. Alienation, yes. And even death. All of those things used to be in the cross. Until, as we just heard in the gospel, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ himself, climbed that cross and died. And he changed forever. The cross is no longer just humiliation and death. It is now eternal life and the end to all suffering because there's power in the cross. Glory to God for all things. Okay, I'm back. So now that you know about the power of the cross, what about letting that power give you the strength to live a new life in Christ. Stop giving power over to those other things in your life. Stop giving power to the demons. Stop giving power to the temptation because there's power in the cross of Christ. And that power is enough to lead you to heaven if you accept it. Join us on our website at liveanewlifeinchrist.org where we can also see you live Wednesdays at 7 o'clock Eastern for our live Bible study. You can also find us on the Orthodox Christian Network at myocn.net. Until next week, God bless you and live a new life in Christ. Be Transfigured is a production of the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina 
and presented by the Orthodox Christian Network. Contributions in support of this ministry may be sent to Be Transfigured, 2990 South Cashua Drive, Florence, South Carolina, 29501, or online at our website at www.liveanewlifeinchrist.org.